All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I apologize that I can't be here today, but again, please be on your best behavior. Um, the lesson for today isn't too difficult. Um, all we've got here is, I just want to start by reviewing what we've been talking about over the last couple days, uh, and then give you a chance to try some practice problems on it. So this goes uh, at the top of your notes where there's a place that says class notes on the worksheet that you picked up, you can put this all there. So, uh, first, we've been talking about three ways to quantify the electricity in the circuit. And those three ways are voltage, resistance, and current. Um, and what we, we should know at this point, the definitions of all those. So voltage is um, a measure of the potential energy. So a measure of the potential energy of the charges. Resistance is um, opposition to the flow of charge. And current is the the flow of charge, or or the we could say the rate or the speed of the flow of charge. Now, what we haven't talked about so much at this point is uh, the symbols that we use for each of these are uh, v voltage and resistance are make sense. V we use we use V for voltage. We use R for resistance. Current, for some reason, and I'm not exactly sure why, but current, we use the symbol I. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, so so those are those are the those are the the three symbols of things that we do. And then we also have uh, different units that we measure them. So the units for voltage are volts. The units for resistance are ohms, which we can abbreviate with this letter omega. That's a horseshoe. And the units for current are amps or amperes. Okay, and then at the very end of yesterday, we came up, we learned that in the circuit, if you have more voltage in the circuit, you get more current. If you have more resistance, you get less current. And we sum that up in the equation V equals IR, which is called Ohm's Law. And that's the equation that you are going to be using to solve the problems today. So it's a basic three variable equation. Um, the only thing that I wanna say further about it is I just kinda wanna connect um, why this equation makes sense, oops, why this equation makes sense and why it fits with what we were talking about on the first day when we had out the Van de Graaff generator and the Wimmer's machine and we were generating sparks and we were shocking ourselves and all that stuff. Um, so what happens in a circuit um, is a circuit always has to start out with a battery. And the purpose of a battery, as you sort of talked about in the lab last time, is just to generate a voltage. And again, a voltage is just basically potential energy. So the, the purpose of the battery is to give the charges potential energy. The way it does it is there's some magic, magical chemistry that goes on in this battery. And what it does is it makes it so that all the positive charges end up on one end of the battery and all the negative charges end up on the other end of the battery. And that's the point of the, the chemical reaction that happens in here. All it does is it separates negative charges from positive charges. But remember, negative charges and positives want to attract each other. So if they could, these positive charges would just jump across there. The problem is, is that uh, it's not very easy for electricity to travel through the air, and so it can't really do this. But if I can hook something up to either end that it can travel through, like a conducting material, like maybe a piece of metal or a wire, if I make a circuit, in other words, and I, um, and then I hook something up, I hook this very thin filament of wire inside a vacuum tube and then I hook another conducting material up on this end, right? Now what happens? Well now again, positives want to attract to negatives and now that there is this path 
for the positives to go, that's why they want to, uh, that, that's why a circuit happens, is because these positive charges want to make it around to the negative side of the battery. And the easiest way to do that is through something that conducts electricity like a wire. So that's the idea of a circuit. And again, it would make sense that if I put more voltage here, that more voltage would lead to more current. That makes sense because if I have more potential energy here, it's got the potential to move faster. It also makes sense that if I have more resistance, so if I put more uh, light bulbs here, that the current would decrease because, again, if you have more resistance, more opposition to the flow of charge, then the charge can't go as fast. So anyway, uh, just 